So hello everyone. Um, again, my name is Urua Taniola Akimali, and I am a PhD student in Dr. Han Zhang Lu's lab at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. I do not know why I did that. Okay. Um, so first, I want to um, say that I have no financial interest or relationships to disclose with regard to the subject matter of this presentation. Um, so I don't need to stop it from changing because I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. So um, first, a little bit about what we will talk about, um, what I'll be talking about in this presentation. Um, so first, we'll talk about the motivation behind our study. And then we will talk um, about the biological mechanisms that allow us to use um, CO2 and O2 inhalation to measure CBR and um, CBV respectfully, and how these measures are useful for um, glioma diagnosis. And then we'll talk about the multi-parametric MRI experimental setup that allowed us to measure both um, CBR and CBV in a single and um, short MR scan. And then I will talk about nope, I will talk about the um, data processing steps that we took um, after we talk about our cohort. And finally, we will discuss the results and I will answer any questions that anyone has. So first, um, the motivation behind our study. So in current clinical practice, um, baseline vascular properties such as cerebral blood flow, cerebral blood volume, and arterial um, arrival delay are um, measured using um, computed tomography perfusion and the gadolinium-based DSC MRI, while um, cerebrovascular reactivity is measured using radionuclide methods such as SPECT or PET, which involves the injection of radioactive tracers. So acquiring, um, acquiring measures on these vascular qualities re um, requires separate um, visits and exams, which um, is a flaw in the current clinical practice and it increases the burden on the patient and the overall cost of care. Um, furthermore, SPECT spec and PET scans expose patients to ionized radiation. And although MR um, contrast, um, MR-based perfusion exams do not, um, the most commonly used MR contrast agent, which is gadolinium chelate, um, cannot be used in patients with impaired renal function. Um, and even in those with normal renal function, um, leftover contrast agent has been found to cross um, into the blood-brain barrier and cell and brain. And although no clinical um, symptoms have been identified, it still poses a safety risk um, when, so it is not used for disease tracking. Um, so having a method that allows us to assess brain hemodynamics in a single brief examination may allow for more efficient, cost-effective, and risk-adverse risk tumor progression therapy and tracking in glioma patients. Um, so next, we can talk about um, the mechanisms that allow us to use um, CO2 and O2 inhalation to measure cerebral vascular reactivity and cerebral blood volume. Um, so CVR is defined as the ability of cerebral vessels to dilate in response to and increase demand for um, tissue blood supply, while cerebral blood, blood volume is the amount of blood in a given amount of tissue. Um, on the left shows a diagram of the molecular mechanisms of vasodilation during CO2 inhalation. Um, so increased CO2 um, in the interstitial space and in the um, in endothelial cells leads to decreased pH through the formation of carbonic acid. Um, in the interstitial space, um, um, the increase in CO2 and decreased pH would lead to the hyperpolarization of the smooth muscle cells um, through the activation of potassium channels, while in endothelial cells, um, increased CO2 and decreased pH would lead to hyperpolarization through potassium channels, um, which will then lead to um, decreased membrane potential of the um, smooth muscle cells through um, the myoendothelial gap junctions through which negative charges pass through. Um, so this would lead to the decreased activity of voltage-dependent um, calcium channels, and then this would lead to reduce intracellular calcium and then vasodilation. Um, the diagram on the left shows the effect of short-duration hyperoxia. Um, increased arterial oxygen diffuses quickly into the tissue 
Um, and this compensates for oxygen that is to be removed from hemoglobin. Um, so this would lead to increased hemoglobin saturation in the blood, compartments that usually have deoxyhemoglobin in the, in the normoxic state. Um, so increasing the oxygen in arterial blood should lead to reduced venous deoxyhemoglobin and therefore an increase in um, our goal response. Um, although in, um, increasing inspired oxygen has often been used as a source of MRI contrast, it does have some complications as it is not an entirely passive agent in vivo. Um, there are multiple physiological and um, biochemical effects of hyperoxia that alter the acidity of blood, the binding of CO2 and O2 with hemoglobin, the partial pressures of um, O2 and CO2, um, as well as the ventilation and TBF. But in theory, these effects should not be significant with short duration hyperoxia, hence why it may be used as a mechanism to measure a venous cerebral blood volume. Um, but how are CVR and CVV useful for understanding gliomas and their progression? Um, so a little backstory or a little background on um, glioma growth. Um, so through a technique known as vascular co-option, glioma cells can initially grow around pre-existing vessels, forming cuff-like clusters, and subsequently generate new vasculature through de novo angiogenesis. Um, they may also grow through vasculogenesis, which is a process whereby bone marrow-derived cells are recruited and incorporated into new vasculature through the um, circulatory system. Um, additionally, they can also use intersusceptive angiogenesis, um, where um, interstitial tissue pushed into the lumen of an, um, a pre-existing vessel and splits it into two, modifying the cerebral vasculature. So these chemical and physical changes in the structural, um, in the cellular microenvironment create functional and structural changes in the neurovascular unit, and this is known as neurovascular recovery. Um, so while DSC, um, um, DC, and ACL, ASL, sorry, <laughs> have been used um, to successfully define changes in neurovasculature caused by gliomas, they are not capable of um, detecting vascular co-option. Um, this is because um, um, angiogenic vessels are leaky, and um, this leads to the extravation of um, tag molecules and um, our contrast agent but vascular co-option involves normal um, cerebral vasculature being compromised by um, glioma cells during their growth. Um, although there is a lack of MR contrast um, and sorry, MR contrast enhancement and bold response um, due to NVU, um, bold CVR mapping has been found that um, has been known to be an indicator of NVU. Um, at it is lowered in gliomas. And this is shown in the figure on the right. Um, as you can see in the tumor region, um, CVR has been found to be lowered. Um, it has also been demonstrated that while a lesion may appear to only have a minimal influence on clinical scans, um, gliomas present with increased blood volume and flow compared to um, surrounding nor um, white um, surrounding why matter due to um, tumor-induced angiogenesis. Um, this is shown in figures on the left, as you can see. Um, it has been found that CBV is increased in tumors um, compared to surrounding tissue and um, other tissue in the contralateral side. So, um, so the goal of our study was to determine whether um, the novel parametric um, MR technique by um, Liu et al. can be used to assess multiple hemodynamic parameters in glioma patients. Um, so this technique is based on the concomitant uh, modulation of CO2 and O2 content in inspired gas while simultaneously collecting um, bold um, signals or bold signals. So the end-tidal um, um, end CO2 and end-tidal O2 of the patients were measured through the, um, the entire duration of the scan. Um, so the timing of CO2 and O2 was designed so that their contributions to the bold signal could be separately assessed. 
um, where CVR is obtained from the bold response to arterial CO2 change. And um, our CBV is um, obtained from our bold response to arterial O2 change. And our bolus arrival time, or BAT, is obtained from the voxel-wise delay between our measured um, end tidal CO2 and um, O2 and our bold MRI signal. Um, so for the concomitant breathing paradigm, which is shown on the left, um, we can see that there's a state whereby hypercapnia is induced, which is the blue block. Um, hyperoxia is induced, which is the red block, and um, hypercapnia and hyperoxia are um, both induced, and which is the yellow block. Um, below, you can see a, um, uh, an example of our bold curve, our whole brain bold signal, um, with our ETCO2 curve and our um, ETO2 curve. So on the right shows the setup in the MRI suite. So there are three bags with our three different gas mixtures, which um, a technician would switch in between the gas mixtures according to the um, paradigm, the time paradigm on the left. Um, so now our patients. Um, so multi-parametric imaging was performed on 15 glioma patients prior to physiological analysis. So in the table, um, in this table, our patients are color coded by diagnosis. Um, in all, they were um, nine grade two patients, um, four grade three patients, and two grade four patients whose data were processed. And um, the diagnosis and grading was based on the WHO 2016 criteria. Uh, so for grade four, we can see that there was one patient who was IDH1 mutant and the other was IDH1 wild type. And then we have our patient pool being heavily related to grade two gliomas. So this flow chart shows um, the steps to obtain our multi-parametric maps after acquiring our data. So first, our bold images were motion corrected and uh, mapped to MPI using SPM, mapped to MPI space using F um, SPM. And then the whole brain bold time course was used to determine global um, ETCO2 and ETO2 shifts. Um, then the bolus arrival time or BAT map was estimated by calculating the temporal shift between the voxel-wise bold time course and our physiological um, curves. And then our CVR and CBB map is calculated using a general linear model with ETCO2 and ETO2 as our independent variables and our voxel-wide bold, um, bold time course as our dependent variable. Um, for our, our for our ROI analysis, um, ROIs were hand-drawn on the clinical flare images, which were obtained on the same day as the functional scan. <laughs> um, so now we can talk about our results. Um, so first, we will discuss the distinctive features of our parametric maps. So shown here, going from left to right, are first our anatomical images. So we have our T1-weighted image, followed by our T1-weighted gadolinium enhanced image, followed by our um, flare image. And then we have our parametric maps. So first our CDV, then our CVR, and then our BAT map. And it's shown for four patients. Patient A, who was diagnosed with um, a grade four glioblastoma. Patient B, who was diagnosed with a grade three anaplastic astrocytoma. Patient C, who was diagnosed with a grade two oligodendroglioma. And patient D, who was diagnosed with a grade two diffuse astrocytoma. Um, for the CVR and CBB maps, it should be noted that dark regions indicate low values while um, high regions indicate high values. And for our BAT map, dark blue indicates low values while green indicates high values. So CVR and CBB is seen to be darker, lower in, um, in the tumor region compared to our surrounding contralateral tissue. Um, this lower CVR region is seen to be the size or larger than the tumor regions defined in our clinical images for astrocytomas, but is seen to be around the same size or slightly smaller um, for our oligodendrogliomas. I should say that this was based on visual inspection. Um, then the lower CBV region um, is seen to be smaller 
compared to the CVR region for astrocytoma, which we thought may indicate that there is um, angiogenesis in the outer tumor region, but these vessels are not mature enough um, to respond to stimuli and why they are larger in the CVR map. Um, and then this low CBB region is seen to be around the same size um, as the tumor region defined in the clinical images for our oligodendroglioma patients. In almost all cases, the tumor regions are green in the BAT map, which indicates a longer response time to um, the gas stimulus. So shown here um, are our results from um, pair-T tests that we conducted for the difference between our tumor ROIs and our contralateral tissue ROIs. Um, so our results indicated that the differences were highly significant with all our um, p-values being much lower than 0.01, um, which indicates that our maps are able to um, differentiate between tumor and healthy tissue. Um, so for our um, CVR and CBB, tumor, the CVR and CBB seem to be lower in tumor regions compared to the contralateral regions, while um, BAT was found to be higher in tumor compared to the contralateral regions. Um, so here on the left shows the relationships between um, tumor CVR normalized by um, the CVR of the contralateral healthy tissue, um, tumor grade and glioma type. So the color code on the bottom indicates the, um, the diagnosis of each patient as shown on the patient slide. Um, so one can see some clustering of this ratio um, with four patients of the same diagnosis. Um, and the slightly, positive um, correlation with tumor grade. And um, on the right is a figure that shows the comparison of um, tumor CBB over CVR for all our patients, where the triangle markers indicates um, contralateral, the contralateral value, and our circle markers indicates um, our tumor value. So across almost all subjects, um, a reasonable increase is seen for the tumor CBB, um, tumor CBB, CBB over CVR compared to the contralateral tissue. Um, so this kind of takes into consideration the effect of um, neurovascular um, uncoupling. So um, we went on to assess whether this increase that we saw was um, significant. So using a pair T test, we were able to see that um, that um, tumor C CBB over CVR was um, significantly different from contralateral CBB over CVR, with it being higher than the contralateral, contralateral ratio. Um, and this is consistent with previous findings that um, CBB is increased for tumor compared to contralateral healthy tissue. Um, we also looked into correlations of this ratio with tumor grade. However, this did not yield significant results, and um, this is most likely due to our small and heterogeneous um, sample sets. Um, so these are references, and please thank you for your attention. It is